welcome back Arcadians, add to another video, how you all doing guys? Well I've got all machines back in the room and I'm really chuffed to have them back in here, out of storage, it means I haven't got to pay any more money towards that. They're not in their right positions right now because I'm still cleaning them and adding any multi games that I've acquired along the line. Um, and some of the machines I think are going to work better at this end of the room than, than others because they're a bit bulkier. Um, but I'm really chuffed to get them in here and I'm not paying any more storage. But this video, guys, this is a, a video of a pickup that I acquired oh, months ago now. It's a really special arcade machine with a real interesting story behind it. It's the Ast Atari Asteroids Deluxe is what you see behind me. Which I've been after for years, guys. Ever since I've been in this hobby, I've been after a Deluxe. And my good friend Whitney was offering me one of his, but obviously it's in Kentucky. It's a long way for me to go and to ship that over and, and can get quite expensive now. So... And you know, I wasn't expecting this, to be honest with you. This was really a tip-off from a friend of mine, Andy, who saw this in a reclamation yard in a little town called Frome, just south of Salisbury. And he said he'd seen an arcade machine in there. And I was like, okay, well, do you know what it was? He said he couldn't remember. So I rang the, the reclamation yard up, and sure enough, it was still there. And um, he said, it's an Asteroids Deluxe, it's not working. And he wanted 550 for it. So I thought it's got to be worth a punt. I've got to drive down and have a look at this before this goes. So I drove there, about an hour and a half for me, just past Stonehenge, that sort of direction. And there it was, right at the back. And I've got a little video of this, which I'll put in at the end in a minute. Um, it's right at the back of this reclamation yard. I mean, this yard's got everything in there from old round top bath tops, um, old wooden oak doors tiles telephone boxes you name it, they've got it and it's a really cool place but i wasn't expecting to see this in there so it just shows you guys where these machines might turn up so i said well what's the story behind this and how much do you want for it so he's looking for 650 for this and he's telling me that this used to be owned by the late great peter grant the manager of led zeppelin and I'm just like, well, yeah, really? Is he just trying to sell this? You know, is this a selling trick? Because um, I couldn't quite believe it. He said, yeah, yeah, no, no. It was owned by the manager. Apparently it went on tour. All the band members used it and stuff like that. And something didn't quite add up because this game was released in 81 and the band disbanded in 1980. So it's very unlikely that the band Led Zeppelin actually played with this arcade machine. But anyway, I went along with it. I said, look, mate, I need to get in the back of this machine. I need to get the door off, get the cam lock drilled out so I can see if it's complete inside. It's very important. It's no good, it's just a box for me. So I said, yeah, sure enough. So I went and got my drill, drilled out the cam lock, and the monitor was there. The vector monitor was there, but it dropped. A couple of the bolts had sheared off, so it was just hanging there. So that wasn't a good sign. Um, but the PC bear, PCB was there, all the original wiring, the loom was there. And I thought, well, you know what, it ain't bad. It's not bad. I might have to take a punt on this. But, I, you know, I, I gave him the old sob story that this can be really difficult to fix and quite expensive, which it, it can be and was, you know. Um, and I said, can you meet me sort of around about 500? And he said, oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I've got other people interested and we've got these, he had these other speakers there, these Seaberg speakers, huge, great big things. He said these were, we were hoping to do a deal with the speakers as well, all part of the Led Zeppelin kind of thing. I said, well, I'm not really interested in them, mate. And I thought, because well, they were just absolutely huge. I've got nowhere to put them, but I thought well, maybe I could flip them. But um, I said to him, have you got any sort of proof that this is from the manager of Led Zeppelin. He said, well, I can write you out a letter um, from us saying that it was, because we know that the son of Led Zeppelin came in here and he sold them to us and he told us the story. Okay, well, it's not really that, it's not proof though, is it, for me? It's not enough for me anyway, but I said, okay, what about 550? And we shook hands on 550, which I thought was a great deal for an Asteroids Deluxe. Complete in pretty good condition, and I'll show you around in it in a minute, but 
obviously not working, so I was going to have to do some work on it. Um, so I've got it in the van. Um, got it round to my friend Mark, who's just a wizard on these kind of things. And he managed to fix the monitor. And the PCB had a few issues, but the main one was the poker chip that was faulty. And we couldn't get hold of one of them. So my friend Phil, Nez for Life, sent me another poker chip. And Bonus, Steve sent me one as well. They both work, by the way. They both work. Just test them both out. And, and I've installed a multi-game in there so I can play Asteroids, Asteroids Deluxe and Lunar Lander. <laughs> right? Three awesome games. And I'm really chuffed with it. It's all working. And um, I'm really pleased to have it in here. But for me, that letter, and I'll show you that letter in a minute from the reclamation yard. Wasn't it, what, that, that letter of certification is not really enough for me. So I went on the internet to try and see if there's any pictures of the arcade machine with the band members. Because sometimes there is, isn't there? You see the odd arcade machine with band members, but there wasn't absolutely nothing. So I managed to hunt down the son, Peter, Peter Grant's son, and um, sent him a message. And you know what? He got back to me. And sure enough, it was him that sold it to the reclamation yard. And the story goes was his father, Peter Grant, brought this as a birthday present for his son, Warren, I don't know what birthday, so it would have been 1981. I don't know how old Warren is, but he bought it for a birthday present. Imagine receiving this as a birthday present. Um, and it's been his son's possession for most of that time. So this was brought by the late, great Peter Grant, the manager of Led Zeppelin, and given to his son as a birthday present. And I'll show you on the back. It's got Grant 92, which is about the time when Peter Grant moved house he moved out of his huge mansion and moved in a, into a smaller abode in i think it was eastbourne something like that he, he, he brought a, a a bungalow or something like that he, he, he had a lot of demons and the only way to get rid of those demons was to, to sort of really wipe the slate clean and get away from that whole led zeppelin scene and start again and that's what he did and i've looked up that he the date 92 on the back of that machine adds up with when he moved out. So basically, it's got Bishop's Move, which is the remo removal company that moved this machine into his new house. And it's on the back. Um, and then, obviously, he gave it to his son and he looked after it. I've asked his son Warren if he could find any pictures he said there I think he thinks there's a few but he, he hasn't found any yet so I'm waiting for some pictures of this machine with uh, Warren Grant which would be absolutely awesome that really would cement it but just getting a message back from Warren for me is enough to prove that this was brought by the late great Peter Grant which is an amazing story isn't it and I love stories that go with these machines like Sky Skipper like Sheriff, like, like Rescue. It's nice to have a story behind every machine. And, and this just adds to it being a, 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 an Irish one as well. So there you go, guys. Can you believe it? I'm, I seem to get quite lucky with the old arcade machines. Eventually, you know, they come round to me. So what I'm going to do is going to show you around the cabinet. Actually, before we do that, I'll show you the, the reclamation yard where I picked it up. And then I'll show you around the cabinet. Down, guys. down the back here somewhere yeah apparently belong to Led Zeppelin the manager and he died and they went and cleared his son's place out here it is so this is this can you believe this this belonged to Led Zeppelin <laughs> right I've got to get busy guys get a drill out Right, the problem I've got, guys, is this monitor is hanging with two butts, uh, bolts holding this end up and nothing holding this end up. And I can't, for the life of them, on my own, get those two out to get the monitor out. It's just fucking a nightmare. Needs two hands, really. It looks okay. It doesn't look necked, which is good. But if it's not working, he said it went pop. It doesn't sound good. 
Um, but other than that, I mean, you know, it's complete. Got to have it. These speakers as well are Led Zeppelin's old speakers. And this is one of their flight cases. And this cabinet, Asteroids Deluxe, which I've been after for quite a long time, uh, is sitting here waiting to be for me to take home. The only problem was, <clears throat> was the monitor had dropped in the back here, but it doesn't look like it's necked or anything like that, but I've managed to secure it with a cable tie, hold it up until I get it home. But you see that, Grant 92. If you Google Led Zeppelin manager, you'll find out that his name was Grant. And there it is on the back. What an amazing piece of history, guys. <sighs> can't believe it, <laughs> I really can't. So here it is, guys. As you notice, the Atari Irish cab, it's got a different marquee. It's got a red spaceship there and red font, but pretty much everything else is exactly the same. And as you notice here, look, actually let's shut the door here because you're getting a bit of reflection. Let's shut that door. There we go. That's a bit better. Here you can see that beautiful black light and the artwork in the, in the back of the cab, which I remember as a kid being absolutely amazed by. And I've installed the multi-game, so if you press both these buttons at the same time, you'll get Asteroids Deluxe. Uh, if we fire up. There we go. So Asteroids Deluxe. And press them again, we get Lunar Lander. Now, I don't know if you remember Lunar Lander, guys, but Lunar Lander, such a rare game to find these days, but it actually had a huge thrust control that you used to pull back on and basically you've got a, an Apollo spaceship that you're trying to land in different various locations on this landscape um, obviously you get more points for landing the the uh, spacecraft onto areas where it's got a multiplier so you can see there it's got a plus five multiplier plus three plus two plus five being the hardest one but just the, if you press thrust, can you hear that thrust? It's awesome. It's really bassy. You know, I, you know, for me, back in the day as a kid playing this was incredible because we were all into space back then. It was space and cowboys, <laughs> that's what we were into. And this game just blew our minds. It's really, really cool. It's not everyone's cup of tea because you only get a certain amount of fuel and then your game's finished. But I absolutely love it. It's a real skill to this game. And it's just nice to have that as a, an extra game to play in this beautiful cabinet. Now you see, I've given it a good clean. Uh, the control panel here, it's got a nasty mark where someone's had their trolley, sat trolley up against it, unfortunately. Other than that, it's not bad. Just got a little chip down the bottom there of the cab. But it's in absolutely fantastic condition. Excuse the mess. I'm moving in, guys. I'm moving in. You can see all my Switch games in there. I'm getting a carpenter in this week. He's going to make all the shelves up. But here it is, guys. Here is the... Look at the side art on that machine. Absolutely stunning. In fantastic condition. And inside, if you can see, it's probably a bit dark. But there you see, look, Grant 92. Bishop's Move, which is a, a removal company in the UK. Big removal company. And if you look that up, 92 is about the year that he sold that huge mansion. Peter Grant's huge mansion. There's a few videos of him in that mansion, if you search for it. Talking about Led Zeppelin. But there you go, guys. Beautiful example of an Asteroids Deluxe. As you can see, got my cabs in, guys, but I'm just sort of fiddling around. I will do another video once they're all in position. But I'm so chuffed to have this in my collection now. It's been a game I've wanted for ages. Every arcade needs a vector game. Such a beautiful game. It really is. There we go, guys. My first ever 
home use only arcade machine with only about 4,300 plays on the counter. Absolutely incredible. And the fact that it's a, a, a Tipperary Atari cab and the fact that Peter Grant brought this as a birthday present for his son Warren is just a lovely story to add to such a, an amazing arcade machine. And the fact that I've got two other games to play now as well, Asteroids and Lunar Lander. This is a fabulous addition to my arcade and I've waited a long time for it, so I'm absolutely chuffed to have it in here, guys. Now, that's it for this video, guys. I have got one more arcade pickup to show you. You can just about see it, <laughs> trying to hide it. Um, that would be my next video. And um, we're going to sort out the arcade. We're going to get the shelving in here next weekend. And then we're going to unbox my collection, my console collection. So look out for those up and coming videos, guys. It's, it's good to be back. It's good to be back in the new arcade. Loving it. Guys, thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you on the next one. Right, so I just thought I'd end this video with a couple of the games. Got to end it on a couple of games, haven't we, guys? Um, so let's try Lunar Lander. Um, so basically, this game, you've got 750 units of fuel. And that's it for the whole game. You do get bonus uh, units of fuel if you get a perfect landing, which I have not achieved yet. And it basically gives you different areas where you can land your ship. You've got a uh, a small thrust and a much stronger thrust, which obviously uses up a lot more fuel. And then you've just got left, right, rotate. That's it. Um, I don't know if you can hear the sound, but it's pretty incredible through the speakers. So as you can see, my little Apollo spaceship is coming down. And every time I use the thrust, I use up a bit of fuel. So I'm going to try and land it directly below me. There is a, uh, a five multiplier. You can try and land it there if I can. Slide it right down. Oh, I'm coming in way too quickly. So I'm going to use up a lot of fuel now. Oh, that looks like a perfect landing to me. Oh, you landed hard, so I've got to be even harder um, on the thrust. But I've got 75 points, not bad. I'm going to try and land over on that um, two multiplier, which is over here. I need a little bit more thrust. Oh. So the larger, the stronger thrust, I should say, really only gives you a vertical speed upwards. So horizontally, you want the smaller thrust. I'm using up tons of fuel here. There's a real knack to this game. I've got a mate of mine, he's really good at this. I think he's actually the world record on this. He's got over a thousand points, maybe 2000 points. He's really good at it. So I'm coming down here. I could actually go for the plus five. There we go, there's the plus five. Should I try and land it there? Let's, let's go for it. <laughs> Coming down way too hard again. And slightly at an angle. Oh. Oh. Oh, congratulations. 250 points. That weren't too bad. <laughs> I've only got 267 units of fuel left. Let's see if I can do one more. My score at the moment is 325. It's a shame this game actually doesn't um, save your score. Try and straighten up if I can. Too much on the edge. <laughs> I used up all my fuel. 
That's Luna Landa. Brilliant game. Absolutely brilliant game. And let's just give you a quick game of... Uh, let's do Asteroids Deluxe. So the difference between this and Asteroids is basically... The Asteroids actually rotate round, whereas in Asteroids they're just flying, you know, straight without turning. And you get these alien ships that, that appear. Here we are. So if I shoot them, they will now follow me. And I've got to basically turn around and shoot them. Oh, got hit by an asteroid. got shields as well and asteroids you don't have shields in asteroid deluxe you've got shields you have like a, a warp button in hyperspace button in asteroids which is a little bit like uh is it like defender <laughs> I can't remember now. but yeah there's a chance of you actually dying when you hit the hyperspace button so i actually prefer asteroids deluxe for the reason that you can use a shield and just bounce off stuff so you bounce and then you can get them extra life at 10,000 oh, can't be on me I think my top score on this is about 45,000 that was a long time ago when I was playing it quite regularly Oh, one life left. <laughs> there we go well oh, there are 27,000 was my last best score on this machine brilliant game and I love the way you really look into it it looks like everything's floating it's like look it's quite relaxing actually to look in there almost like looking into a fish tank watching fish go around in a bowl. It's a really cool effect. But that's it.